coming up on National Focus. Damage to the island's infrastructure as a result of strong winds and torrential rain. More Dominican students awarded an opportunity to pursue university studies in China. And talks of literary festival being developed into a niche tourism product. I'm Tanya Green. Welcome to National Focus. And I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Topping the headlines, OECS parliamentarians voice support for the OECS Assembly. And the Public Works Minister commends nationals who demonstrated community spirit in the aftermath of Tropical Depression 7. All these stories and more when National Focus returns. First off on the news, heavy rains and winds associated with what was left of Tropical Depression 7 lashed the island on Saturday night and Sunday morning, leaving $110,000 worth of damage to the island's road and other infrastructure. GIS News understands that the damage ranged from rock falls to land slippages and flooding. That's right, Tanya. Some of the areas worst affected were Casabros, Good Hope, Pitted Soufre, San Sauve, Clark Hall in Layou Valley, Kinfield in the vicinity of the airport, Massac, Campbell, the Rosa Valley, including communities such as Barf Estate, Emsol, Trafalgar, and Watton Waven, were also affected. Public Works Minister Honorable Raven Blackmore told GIS News on Monday that the section of road in the boxing plant area in Clark Hall, Layou, was washed out by the river. There were areas where damages or the damage, the damages were more pronounced. For example, you have the Clark Hall area in the vicinity of the old boxing plant where the river, the Layou River, actually eroded that segment of the road and to the extent to which it was not possible to have had vehicular traffic flow. Within hours, the Ministry of Public Works Energy and Ports, with the assistance of private operators and owners of pieces of equipment, um, Jack Gallican and Paris Williams, were able to actually bypass that area. And by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we were able to re-establish re um, vehicular traffic flow so that the persons in the Lyle Valley could have had access to the various parts and portions of the country. The Minister of Public Works is reporting that a loan had already been contracted from the Caribbean Development Bank to realign the road and to build a river wall in the Lyo area, which will bring some safety and security to the people of Hillsborough, who are again affected by the weekend rains. In terms of our futuristic plan, you may recall that we have been able to contract loan up to, a loan up to $40 million for the realignment of the, of the road in the Lyo area, Valley area, Lyo, sorry, Lyo area. And the area where we were able to bypass, bypass the road is, that, is indeed earmarked for the realignment of the proposed work. And of course, the construction of river walls, et cetera, and the construction of a new bridge. So um, that in itself fits in nicely to our, to our futuristic plan. In the meantime, the area remains very dangerous. And, and that is why we have to ensure, as a government, that we move quickly to, to put the mitigating factors in place so that we can have some, um, some degree of security and, and calmness restored in that area. The Public Works Minister is commending the many people who turned out on Sunday to assist in the aftermath of the heavy rains. I want to personally record my appreciation for all the persons, the operators, the owners of pieces of equipment who came out yesterday on a Sunday and to respond so quickly. I cannot recall with absolute clarity all the names, but people like um, Romel, like Anthony Coffey, uh, Earl and Loder, Shane Alexander, and Vidal. And these persons have been all there and assisting. And it's a young guy from Mao who have been, always been around with his, um, uh, helping and responding to the cause. And the, the, of course, the persons who operate the trucks, the trucks and to, to, to transport the debris 
and the chief technical officer and and, and Dwight Lewis and, and, and Mr. Emil Lance and all the, all the other engineers and technicians who were on the road on Sunday and um, doing the national assessment to give us, a, give us a clear perspective as to how they move forward. Meantime, parliamentary representative for the St. Joseph constituency, Honorable Kelva Daru, has advised his constituents to continue to exercise caution during this hurricane season. But residents have to be aware that um, the area is prone to flash flooding at any point in time. And now that we are in the peak of the hurricane season, under rainy season, residents have to be, take very precautionary measures to ensure that the, their lives, very importantly, their lives are protected and safeguarded. And I want to advise the persons who are living in the area, although it may be difficult for them to move at this point in time, but they have to be very cautious. They have to adhere to the, the signs that are given by the Office of Disaster Management and ensure that at the end of the day, their lives are given priority over anything else. The parliamentary representative is optimistic that work on the river wall and new bridge in the York Valley area in Layu will commence before the end of this year. The government, as, as we know, always responds in a very practical way. And hopefully we will begin to see the monies from the city before for, for the, that project begin, in, begin implementation sometime in the last quarter of this financial year, moving on to 2013, 2014. So we are hoping that um, We'll see the commencement of work pretty shortly for the river, river walls, the rehabilitation of the roads, and also we we'll also see a, a new bridge in the, the York Valley area, which will be funded by the People's Republic of China. GIS News understands that as a consequence of the weekend flooding, there was some loss of livestock in the Casabros area. In more news, nine Dominicans have been awarded scholarships to attend university in China this year. The students received their admission notices from acting president of Dominica, His Excellency Dr. Edward Wati, on Friday. The students will join the ranks of the 107 other Dominicans who have studied in China since the establishment of the relations with the country. Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Honorable Peter St. Jean, when he addressed the ceremony, admonished the students to use their education as a means of taking their country to the next level. Your role is to ensure that you work hard, remain focused, and come back home to take Dominica and Dominicans to where we aspire to see our nation, what we define as the next level. His Excellency Wang Zonglai, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, told the students to expect challenges in their endeavors. Dear students, you may think yeah. <clears throat> for uh, you may think uh, four to five years in China is a long time, but in fact it can pass in a blink. So please make good use of the time to learn new knowledge, gain experience, and make yourselves ready for the future. Make it count and leave no regrets behind. At the same time, difficulties and the setbacks will be inevitable on the way, including cultural shock, difficulties in studies, and so on. The ambassador also told the students that they should strive for success because no pain is no gain. As the saying goes, no pains no gains. Those growing pains are actually there to make you stronger. So just believe in yourselves. Keep working hard and never give up. The belief and efforts will get you through all challenges you encounter in the future. Honorable Kelva Daru is of the view that the chance to study abroad is a privilege, so the recipients should make full use of that opportunity. And I believe having the opportunity to advance yourselves should never be taken lightly. Because in several countries across the world, there are students who will never have the opportunity that you have been given today. And the onus is on you as young people to take full advantage of this opportunity and to ensure that you make the best use of it. And when you have completed your studies, you can come back and make a meaningful contribution to your country. 
the scholarship recipients leave for China in less than 20 days. And OECS parliamentarians gathered at the Antigua House of Parliament last Friday for the inauguration of the OECS Assembly. The Regional Assembly is yet another step in efforts by regional leaders towards regional integration. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt led a delegation, including opposition leader Honorable Hector John, government ministers, cabinet secretary, speaker of the House of Assembly, and representatives of private sector organizations and unions to the regional event. Mervyn Matthew attended Friday's event and files this report. Heads of OECS states as well as representatives of both sides of parliaments across the region entered the parade square of the Antigua and Barbuda House of Parliament on Friday, August 10, as that country prepared to host an event which would mark continued efforts by the region's leaders towards the process of OECS integration. Among the leaders attending Friday's regional event was Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Honorable Baldwin Spencer, and Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, who is also the chairman of the OECS Authority. Good afternoon. This is a wonderful day for this Caribbean. The two leaders inspected a guard of honor comprising officers and ranks of the Royal Antigua and Barbuda Police Force. Inside the House of Parliament, contingents representing OECS states as well as representatives of the OECS and CARICOM secretariats. Dominic was well represented at the event by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, who sat alongside opposition leader Honorable Hector John. The island's delegation also included government ministers, cabinet secretary, speaker of the House of Assembly, as well as representatives of the private sector organizations and unions. Rene Baptist of St. Vincent and the Grenadines was elected unopposed as speaker of the regional assembly, while Honorable Walford Gums, deputy speaker. Time is of the OECS Assembly is provided for under Article 10 of the revised Treaty of Bastia and is one of five principal organs establishing the OECS. The four other organs are the OECS Authority, the OECS Commission, the Economic Affairs Council and the Ministerial Council. Antigua's Prime Minister Honorable Baldwin Spencer in his maiden address to the OECS parliamentarians referred to the role of the Assembly. Its most important function is to be a consultative body to enhance regional dialogue on critical issues of integration and development and to make proposals to the OECS authority for enacting regional legislation binding on all Throughout the member states of the OECS, there are varied views on the formation of this regional body. But there is consensus, though, that it is a major step on the road to further OECS integration. All these innovations are directed at cleaning and broadening OECS integration, improving responsible and more effective governance in the OECS, and delivering more benefits, much better, for the people of the OECS. The OECS Assembly comprises five members of the Parliament of each independent member state and three members from the legislature of each non-independent state with representation from both the ruling administration and the political opposition. Premier of Monstrat Ruben Mead blended reality with optimism for the regional assembly during his address on behalf of the non-independent states. It's a long On a national level, leaders on both sides of parliaments are in full support of the inauguration of the regional assembly. It's the first step where we can bring parliamentarians from across the political divide, recognizing that we're, we're, we're coming here as regional um, parliamentarians to discuss matters affecting, of course, our domestic situation, but more critically, our regional um, um, situation. It also opened the door for more consultation between um, the opposition and the government from the individual territories because we must come together to represent, become not as party, 
but you come as representatives representatives of the respective islands. OECS leaders left Friday's event optimistic of a continued unfurling of the OECS integration process and the memory of the Antiguan skies ablaze with fireworks and the sounds of steel pan music. For National Focus, I am Melvin Murphy reporting. Truly a historic event indeed. So, Mervyn, tell us, how did it feel as a media person having had the opportunity to be at such an important occasion? Well, Tanya, basically, um, when you look at such a, a major event happening in the region and the impact it's going to have on Caribbean integration, for example, one can't help but feel honored to be part of it, seeing that in the first place it was originally scheduled for June 15. Um, being there among several Caribbean journalists, and um, you must remember also that just days before we had this media clinic where the OECS officials of the OECS Secretariat sought to give us an idea as to what exactly is the OECS Assembly. Give us an idea as to, hey, you all are going to write stories on this, but do you all know exactly what you all are going to talk about? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. coming out of that meeting now, you have a better understanding as mm. to what is it this, this OECS assembly is all about. Definitely. Now, for the layman who is probably looking at us right now, mm. what, from your perspective, mm. came out of that meeting? What is your understanding? How, how are you going to, you know, educate the public about the OECS authority? Well, generally, the OECS authority is like, okay, let, let's take it in, in, for example, Dominica Parliament. Right. And just let's, let's say it's... Instead of looking at someone representing Marigold, for example, let's say that person's representing St. Lucia. So the regional parliament brings all these, all these people together. And one of the main aspects of that is, in this case, it's not only the ruling party. Right. It's both the opposition and the ruling government. So it, 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 what it does at the end of the day, it, it gives the, 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 the people in the region a bigger scope to say, okay, well, hey, this is what's going on in these individual countries. Okay, let's take it to the regional parliament. Let's, mm -hmm. let's discuss it. Instead of having this, usually this back and forth between, between um, different sides of parliaments in individual countries. Yes. Let's discuss it and let's see if we as a collective can bring an end to this. Moving along, there has been a noticeable interest by Dominican writers to improve on their work over the past five years. Chairman of the Nature Island Literary Festival and Book Fair Organizing Committee, Dr. Alwyn Bully, made that observation when he addressed the official opening ceremony of the fifth edition of the Island's Literary Festival last weekend. According to him, the influence of the festival has been manifested in the increase in the number of book launches which have taken place over the last five years. I must say that I'm heartened by the growing interest in the literary arts through events like the primary school's reading competition, which attracts national attention. The number of book launches we've been hearing of and, and witnessing and attending over the last four or five years. The number of poetry groups and spoken word poets. The number of calypsos written in the, each year and performed. Those are poetry too. I'm not saying that because of this festival, the number has, has grown. But I think there has been some influence by the fact that it has become such a landmark now, even in a short period of five years, that we are happy to report that it is growing with each passing year. The National Literary Festival and Book Fair, which ran from Friday evening into Sunday evening, had as guest writers Caribbean literary giant George Lamming and leading St. Martin writer Lasano Seco. Presenters also included Dominican author and jurist based in Canada, Justice Dr. Irvin Andre, and several other Dominican and Caribbean writers and poets. And Dominicans have been encouraged to view the literary festival and book fair as one having the potential for economic growth. Tourism Minister Honorable Ian Douglas, in welcoming the many guests to the island for the festival, said the festival could be incorporated into the national export strategy. This festival is an important component in building the cultural industries which is captured in our national export strategy as a potential instrument for economic growth. 
Embodied in this strategy is the government of Dominica's recognition of the cultural industries as a desire, desirable growth avenue and provision is made to develop and nurture this through the National Export Council Secretariat, which is charged with the realization of the export strategy. The minister is suggesting that the literary festival, if nurtured sufficiently, could grow into a unique tourism product. The Nature Island Literary Festival and Book Fair has the potential to become an even greater event on our calendar and to grow into a tourism product with a difference, very much like what the World Creole Music Festival has done. A cultural product of distinction, a feast of Caribbean literary fair, which can be marketed to a wider regional and international audience. Such a product would attract visitors from the regional and further afield, thereby increasing our visitor arrivals and foreign exchange earnings. And at the same time, encourage local writers and stimulate the interests, particularly in our youth, in the literary arts. Visiting writers and festival enthusiasts could promote their Dominican experience on, the, on their return home, thus encouraging new visitors and, of course, they themselves returning for a second, third, and fourth time. The minister took the opportunity to commend the organizers for their tenacity and foresight in sustaining the event. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Macpherson St. Louis for the Creole Highlights. Hello, everyone. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en créole, non moins c'est Macpherson saint louis Premièrement, délégation dominique pour grand assemblée ou ici qui prend place en Tigre, t'es bien représenté. Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, t'es chef délégation gouvernement, pendant chef opposition Honorable Hector John, représenté opposition. Ministère qui n'est responsabilité pour les affaires ou ici Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, t'es membre délégation dominique en grand inauguration ça là parlement ça c'est un parlement qui comprise haut monde c'est gouvernement on est premier ministre um, Skerritt et puis monsieur Ambro George ministre Ambro George ministre Blackmore ministre uh, McIntyre et puis um, chef opposition aussi c'est um, honorable um, Hector John et on bon bail pour avec um, um, honorable Hector John Cisé à ça et puis premier ministre comme si dit c'est un la team là actuellement ça c'est un team Dominique <laughs> un team car man monsieur John Deka garder bien bon là si c'est côté premier ministre là et ben il était content il il cache ça il était bien content pour si c'est là aussi l'autre place là mais on nous dit ça donc nous capable les côté um, bail qui bien sérieux à à à Caribla ou ici est là et ben by ça c'est am 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 organization ça c'est organization qui comprise hot moon hot am opposition et ben hot moon am moon qui am ka a gouvernement et ben toutes ces petites lois législation toutes ces bail nous n'est pas c'est pour ici cela c'est là nous ça fait nous ka nous pas ka parler quoi bitter qui est affecté comme si des ça nous ka fait à Dominique tout seul. I mean, c'est pas tout dire il a pour place gouvernement non, c'est pas ça. C'est un bail nous ni en economic union, nous ni bail que loi, nous bail nous ca gagner en en oui mais nous ca bail nous contre liat toutes ces toutes ces qualités bail ça. Nous ni en lou bagaille, nous ni à OICS là. Nous ca servir avec toutes ces bail ça et il bon pour pour nous. So actuellement nous 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 commencer sans en OICS assemblée. Un autre nouvelle, le gouvernement de l'Omne 420 a été chimé en délais. La coopération public works n'est contract pour le projet Salam. C'est l'homme du Parlement Honorable Peter Saint-Jean qui a été chimé en délais pour ce projet. Le travail qui a été en place en le chimé, le grand chimé, le boutique pour y vider l'IS. Le gouvernement a dépensé 1,2 million de dollars pour ranger le chimé Salam. Et vous avez changé qui a en temps passé, parler contre Chimé Salah, puisqu'il n'est pas dans de bonnes conditions. Et le gouvernement, tant que nous, et présentement, Public Works n'y a un contrat, et il a engagé quatre les autres normes, Horde, Delis et Boetica, pour faire travail dans le maçon de la. Et Wellman, nous avons gardé pour nous ranger 3,2 km Chimé. Et ça pour moi c'est un bon bitin, puisque Wellman, Pep Delis, yo 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 
souffre en lot en, en l'eau et jodi jou nou ka wè délivrance wellement rivé a moi vle oui merci gouvernement là puisque en partie de tout ça qui ka fait on la terre nous ça pour qualité l'argent ça là et mettez en délice Stan Collins Dominique ka conduit course pour moun média en Dominique Moissala Paul Sala sorti au directeur des affaires d'éducation M. Meryl Mafio selon M. Mafio moun média Dominique ça veut dire pour course là en l'occasion Stan Collins Dominique en la coudoué nous avons une course en haut aussi pour les gens qui sont en média, pour les journalistes. Nous avons un professionnel qui a sorti de l'Alon qui a venu pour conduire la ça. Et puis, comme ça, il a montré les professionnels en média comment pour faire le travail au plus meilleur. Comme ça, il a montré les différentes techniques pour. pour trapper information et puis pour présenter information parce que ça c'est en cause mon ami Dian il faut garder pour et puis try pour enregistrer pour cause ça et puis finalement assemblée au ICS chain bon meeting inauguration à yon vendredi passé en Antigue chef pays au ICS ensemble et puis opposition attendait inauguration là en parlement Antigue il a fait appointement honorable René Baptiste pour speaker net assemblée cela Selon Paul Hall, Honorable Baptiste, il n'est toute confiance que l'Assemblée là qui fait travail et puis mandat yoni. Assemblée ça là qui expecté pour joindre à peu près deux fois par l'année, quand même l'autre grand meeting ça là qui tient en septembre l'année ça là. Baptiste aussi fait Paul qui yo que joindre mettre mise en place pour l'autre grand meeting ailleurs et des d'autres comités qui aussi mettre en place fait assurer que l'Assemblée là marche bien. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nouvelles en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Macfus en Saint-Louis. Au revoir. Up next is the tip of the day. In today's tip, we'll discuss taking chances. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. This motto sounds simple enough until you actually try to apply it. From fears of making the wrong move to worries about looking foolish, taking risk is not an easy thing to do. While there is no magic way to predict an outcome, some honest evaluation beforehand can make the decision to take a risk a little, well, less risky. So here's a little advice. The first step to taking the right risk is to tune into your instincts and learn to trust them. And that's National Focus. As usual, we invite your suggestions or comments. Feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or you could visit our website at news.gov.dm Or you could visit our GIS Dominica page on both YouTube and Facebook. On behalf of the entire news production team, I am Tanya Green. And I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for watching.